All right, yeah, yeah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your first Algebra One video lesson. Big shooter, Mr. Wazikowski here. All right, boys and girls, let's go through our first lesson. Hope you guys like the intro music that was Enter Sandman by Metallica. I'll try and open every lesson with some sort of music so you guys get all jacked up to learn about some math. Today, gentlemen, is our first uh, video lesson we are going to do is on variables and expressions. All right, our learning target for this lesson will be to write and evaluate algebraic expressions. So for every video lesson, I will give you this learning target or one similar to it, uh, which is your goal by the end of this video lesson and by the end of class the next day when we actually go through uh, this material. All right, let's start with the key terms for this section. First, the I think the most important term we have, I think, in all of algebra, and this is really the start of it, is something that's called a variable. Now, a variable really stems from science and from science class. And all math, algebra, calculus, as you get higher up, all stems, or basically all math, comes from science. So a variable is a way in which we represent something that can change. For example, your age. So for your age, you may be, I don't know, 14 years old. But your age is something that can change. It's not always 14. It's actually 14 for a very small amount of time. So instead of using 14, we can use a symbol or letter to represent your age, such as X. So you can say that you're X years old. Or other variables we may use, Y, Z. Those are kind of the basic variables we use. You could see R. Um, you could see symbols like in science, like a triangle sign that represents certain things. Okay, basically a variable is used to represent a number that is not constant, something that is constantly changing. Okay, it's just a helpful way to do this. Going off of that, the other second term we have is something that is constant. Now, something that is constant obviously does not change. To, to be constant means it's unchanging, it's the same value throughout. Now, when we talk about a constant, we basically mean any sort of number. So the number 2, that would be a constant, because that number is always going to be the same. Whereas something that's not constant, like, for example, x, x is a variable. So variables and constants are basically two opposite things. Constants are the same. Variables are things that change. Okay, so... Today what we're going to look at is taking these ideas of variables and constants is use them to solve both numerical and algebraic expressions. So numerical expressions are basic math expressions. And what we mean by expression is you take certain numbers and you do certain operations with it. For example, 2 plus 2. This is a numerical expression. It's numerical because it only contains constants, only contains numbers. Two and two are both constant numbers that aren't changing. They're not variables. And the operations, this is what gives us an expression, the operations are things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Things by up to this point you should hopefully have a, a relatively strong knowledge of. Now, whereas we could have something called an algebraic expression, which could be a numerical expression, but the big difference between an algebraic expression and a numerical expression is this idea of a variable. An algebraic expression um, contains these variables, which means that it's an expression that can change. Now, this is a very difficult and strange idea for, be, uh, for beginners. But what would this might look like? So instead of 2 plus 2 that we have up here for the numerical expression, an algebraic expression could represent or be written as 2 plus x, where now x is a variable, okay, remember we use this symbol x as a variable, that represents some number. Maybe it's your age or something like that, okay? x represents a number that can possibly change. So, algebraic expressions are similar to numerical expressions, but what we do is we throw in these ideas of variables, 
due to things that change. So now we're going to go through an example of just being able to write uh, an expression, whether it's algebraic or numeric. Okay. So again, just to revisit what we just talked about, a numeric expression would be something containing only numbers or only constants, for example, 2 plus 2. An algebraic expression would be something like 2 plus x, something that now has a variable involved. So first, understanding the difference. So here what we're going to do is look at some algebraic expressions, because I feel that numeric expressions 2 plus 2 are things that at this point you guys should have a good understanding of how to do that. Now, when we write a algebraic or numeric expressions, first thing we have to understand are what are called operations. Okay? What we mean by operations are things, like we said in the last slide, of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So those are operations. We can also look at things like inequalities. All right. So things like greater than, um, less than, depending on how you look at it, um, greater than or equal to, and so on, things like that. We can also look at those sort of things and write an algebraic expression off of those. Okay, so let's look at two examples. All right, so the first one, the quotient of t and 5. Okay, now when we look at this, just think of variables and constants. t, okay, that is not a number, but that is a variable. We are using t to represent something that is changing. And 5, that is a number, that is a constant. Now, to write this expression, we have to think of, okay, what is the quotient of t and 5? Okay, this is going to, the quotient is going to talk, talk to us about one of these operations. Now, thinking of the operations that we have here on the top right, we have a, the addition symbol plus, minus, multiplication, division. So you have to think of, when we say quotient, what we're looking at is what these two would make up when we perform this operation. So some key terms you want to remember. When you add something, its final result we call the sum. Right? When we subtract something, that final result is called the difference. That should be an F. The X, or the multiplication symbol, whatever its result is, we call the product. And division, we call the quotient. And I'm running out of space, so I apologize there. But that is, that's supposed to say quotient right there. So, when we look at this expression, it says the quotient of t and 5. So when you see this um, operation of quotient, that is telling us we're taking t and 5 and we're dividing those things out. Okay. So the quotient of t and 5, now I guess I'm not telling you if it's the quotient of t uh, with 5. So you can write this, I guess, two ways. Quotient of t and 5 could be written as t divided by 5. Or you could write this as t divided by 5 using that symbol. Or you could write this as the opposite. 5 divided by t. Or 5 divided by t. Usually when we get some sort of expression, we're always going to take whatever number is labeled first and do the operation with the second number if we get something like this. Okay. Now, looking at the next example, n is less than 4. Okay, so n, again, this right here, n is a variable, not a constant. 4 would be a constant. Now we have to think of less than. Less than is going to tell us that n is a smaller number than 4. Okay, so to write this out, n and 4, you've got to remember the symbol less than. Okay, less than is going to repre be represented by one of the inequalities that we have up on the top right. Okay, we want to write this, and remember when we write less than or greater than, the less than I always think about as the tip of this arrow. Okay, that's going to point to something that's smaller, because the wider side something that's bigger. This is going to represent, so that's less, and this side's going to represent more or greater. Okay, so to write n is less than 4, I'm going to take the arrow, draw it in there, and represent it like that. Okay. So what we've done here is we've taken something, a mathematical expression written in words, and we've now written it as a mathematical expression. One thing I want to point out here 
is this is this expression here between n and 4 is a good reason why we use variables. Okay, the, the expression says that n is less than 4. Well, if you think about it, n being a variable can have different values. It can change, meaning n could represent anything less than 4. So think of the numbers. n could be 3, could be 2, could be 1, could even be 0. So notice how we're not using a constant, but we have multiple numbers that could represent n that would all follow this expression. So this is all right, another example here. We, now we have an algebraic expression given some of this information. Now this one you have to um, translate these words and write them into an algebraic expression, which is a little difficult. So here's the, here's the, uh, the phrase that we have, or the, the, uh, the sentence is, Mike is 20 years older than Kevin, who is Y years old. Now when I first talked about using variables, the example I brought up is age. Because if you really think of your age, it is never the same. Even though we use our age as being the same for an entire year, this is kind of getting deep now, but this is, you know, if you think of time, time is constantly changing, meaning our age is never really the same. We are always getting older. So, we can say, okay, instead of using one individual's age or just a specific age, we now represent this as a variable. So we're here representing Kevin's age as y years old. Why? Why is because Kevin may be, for example, 26 years old, but it's always changing. Okay? And what we're also saying here is that Mike is 20 years younger than Kevin. Okay? Now, we can use this constant of 20 as a number because no matter what, to, uh, Mike and Kevin, for t time is basically the same for each person. A second for Kevin is not different than a second for Mike. So Mike is always going to be 20 years younger than Kevin. So we can use a number in this case. All right, so now to take this and write an expression. Well, we know that Mike is 20 years younger than Kevin. So I always, the easiest way to think about this is start with the larger value. Okay, Mike is 20 years younger, meaning Kevin's going to be older. So I'm going to start with Kevin's age. I'm going to say Kevin is Y years old. We don't know what his age is. It's something that's changing. So we're going to use this letter to represent his age. His age could be 20, could be 26, could be 15. Y could represent any value. All right. But what is going to be true, no matter how old Kevin is, we know that Mike is going to be 20 years younger. So I'm going to put in 20. Now, the operation that we're going to use, okay, think about 20 years younger. Okay, think about age, 20 years younger. If you have a brother or sister, let's say I have a brother that's two years older than me, he's my age with two additional years added on. So when Mike is 20 years younger, we can say that, or, that Kevin, being Y years old, if I were to subtract off 20 years, that is going to give me Mike's age. Okay? So this right here would be our expression for this term, or for this sentence. Kevin represented Y is 20 years less, or 20 years younger than Mike, which is shown here as Y minus 20. So this right here would be my, sorry, algebraic expression for this sentence. All right, the next step of this process is now to evaluate expressions. When I say evaluate, we are going to solve certain expressions. Now what we're going to look at here are algebraic expressions. I would expect up to this point that you should be able to do or evaluate a numerical expression such as 2 plus 2. When I say evaluate, that means we're going to find out what 2 plus 2 is or what it's equal to. In this case, it's equal to 5. Just kidding, it's equal to 4. Okay? So, evaluating for it, we are going to look at what the product is, the quotient is, the sum or the difference. So here, first example, I'm just going to look at two of them here. I have x minus y. x and y are both variables. Now, in the directions, it tells us to evaluate the following expressions where x is equal to 8, y is equal to 4, and z is equal to 5. So x minus y is an algebraic expression where we're using two variables, x and y, 
to represent different values. Okay, they could represent anything. Now in this case, I'm telling you that x is being represented by the number 8. So what I can do is I can take this, exp this algebraic expression here, and now I can rewrite it as a numerical expression by substituting in the value for what is represented. So here x is my variable, and I know that x is equal to 8. So I can plug in 8 for x. I can do the same with y. I know y is equal to 4. So what I can do is I can substitute that into the equation, or that expression, for y. So, instead of writing y in my expression, I can write this as a numerical expression and write it as 4. And now I get a simple numerical expression where 8 minus 4 is going to equal to 4, and that would be my answer. So now I've evaluate, evaluated this expression. Here what we're doing is we're taking an algebraic expression, and we are writing it as a numerical expression so that we can get an answer. All right? So now we're getting used to writing an algebraic expression and solving it. Let's do one more. Let's do the second example here. I have a new expression that now contains both constants, operations, and variables. So I have 3z plus 2y. Now, when I write something as this, like 3z, okay, 3z, okay, if I think about plugging this in, I know, just like we talked about before, is we're going to try and take this algebraic expression and plug in, substitute in, replace z for what it actually represents, which in this case is 5. Now, here's a common mistake. When I substitute this in, I'm not going to write this as 35. 3z is not telling me that it's a number of 35, but what this expression is telling me is that I'm taking z, or 3, and multiplying it by what z represents. So I'm going to take the product of these two. Okay, 3 then times 5. Now you can write a product as with parentheses. You could also write 3 times 5 like that. Doesn't matter. Okay, so that's the first part. Then I'm going to add to it the second. Okay, 2y, which 2y really represents 2 times y. It's the product. So again, we're not going to write this as 24, but it's going to be 2 times 4. So now this algebraic expression is now represented as a numerical expression. 3 times 5 plus 2 times 4. Okay, now this goes back, this example goes back to order. That looks ugly, I'm going to rewrite that. Never mind, order of operations. So here I have both an operation of addition, I also have an operation of multiplication. So, order of operations is going to tell us you do any exponents or powers first, then you go to multiplication and division. So here I have two things that are being multiplied, so I'm going to do those first. So let's start with 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is going to give me, so let's draw an arrow here, 15. So 3 times 5 gives me 15, plus the product of 2 and 4, which is going to give me 8. And now I can add those two numbers together. 15 plus 8 is going to give me 23. And I've now solved this uh, algebraic expression into a final number. So we have now evaluated this expression. All right, that concludes our first video lesson. So hopefully you got something out of this. If you need to at all, please, if you felt like this has gone by too fast, feel free to stop at any point throughout this video and pause and rewind. If you need to go back and watch it, feel free to go back and watch it as many times as possible. Um, again, if you want to find these videos, make sure you check out our, or my YouTube channel. Uh, this will be under the Chapter 1 of Algebra 1. Um, section 1.1, saying so many ones. Uh, but stick around for more, um, and hopefully by today you kind of got a better sense on how to write and evaluate algebraic expressions.